So it's been quite a while since I've uploaded a video. I'm sorry for the long hiatus, but I am back. And today we're going to be reviewing S.H. Figuarts' figure of the Hulk as depicted in Avengers Endgame. Now this iteration of the Hulk uh, has been quite controversial. Uh, he's not aggressive like his previous self, so to speak. I mean, he's intelligent, uh, he can hold conversations, he wears clothes, as you can see, but he just doesn't have the aggression that his previous self had, uh, his previous self being the Savage Hulk, which is the Hulk that we're pretty much used to for the most part uh, in terms of the Hulk overall as he's been depicted in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, uh, what do I think? I personally love this iteration of the Hulk. Uh, I mean, I do think that it is a bit disappointing that he's not as aggressive as he would be if he were his previous self. However, I understand why the directors and the writers and the filmmakers overall chose to steer the character in the direction into which they steered him in Avengers Endgame. Uh, it just makes sense in terms of the overall arc that the character of Bruce Banner slash the Incredible Hulk has been striding along throughout this uh, this saga, so to speak. Uh, but those are those are my two cents. Now, uh, one thing people might not have noticed in the movie Avengers Endgame is that this version of the Hulk is actually a bit smaller than his previous Savage self. Uh, his previous Savage self, according to one of the lead VFX artists that worked on the movie, Avengers Endgame, uh, was eight and a half feet tall, slash is eight and a half feet tall, however you want to look at it in terms of time. Uh, but this version is only seven and a half feet tall, so he's a foot shorter. And then when we started with Smart Hulk, we knew he was going to be, because of the merging of Banner and Hulk, he'd be a little bit smaller, right? So the Hulk himself, he's about eight foot, eight foot five. You know, he'll slouch a little bit. If you compare him to Thanos, he's actually taller than Thanos, except when he slouches. <laughs> so he's a little shorter than Thanos. So we made him about seven foot five. So we... And that was done because this Hulk is supposed to be more human. So they want to make him a bit more relatable, so to speak. So they, they shrunk him down. However, I think that the actual technical answer is that since he's more human and he interacts with the other characters much more than he has in previous films there would have been a bit of an issue in regard to fitting him into a lot of shots with the other characters without him being cut off from the chest up or the neck up as a result of being eight and a half feet tall so they shrunk him down a bit to uh, make it easier to fit him in the same frame in wide shots with the other characters that's my personal belief there's nothing to indicate that but that's the most logical explanation so now let's check out the articulation of the figure let's start off with the head now we can turn the head to the sides to quite a degree however we cannot turn the head a full 360 degrees if we do so it comes off now um, some people might consider that unfortunate I don't because I don't see the practicality and turning the head a full 360 degrees anyway seems pretty unnecessary so I don't mind that uh, that inability if you want to call it that now let's uh, look at the arms we have butterfly joints at the shoulders so we have more articulation than we would have otherwise uh, let's check out how much rotation we get we get a full 360 degrees of rotation uh, with the arms at the shoulders now if we have the arms positioned downward, if you will, you can bend them up this much. If we have the arms positioned upwards, if you will, we can bend them up this much. So I'd say that's, that's pretty good. Let's check out the elbows. Uh, we can bend the arms at the elbows a full 90 degrees, which is rather nice. We can't bend it more than that because of uh, the sculpt of the bicep. I don't mind. Uh, some people, you know, do or, or would, I would imagine, but I personally don't mind that at all. Now, uh, the hands at the wrist, we get a full 360 degrees of rotation. We can bend them inwards, which is nice. Okay, I bent it a bit too much, came off. But we can bend them a bit inward, which is rather nice. Oops. 
just not too much. Nice. Okay, let's check out the midsection. We don't get that much articulation at this midpoint uh, of the torso. Or should I say at the midpoint of the torso? There's only one. But it does help a little. Uh, so if you want to get the figure to look as if it's looking down, you get a little bit more uh, bend. It's not bad for a figure that's this bulky. This That's not bad at all. I'm, I'm not disappointed. So uh, let's check out uh, the waist. We get a full 360 degrees of rotation at the waist. Though um, there is a bit of resistance and there could be some paint rub, so you might, might not want to do that. Let's check out the articulation at the hips. So we can bend his legs outward this much. Rather nice. We want to rotate them. We can rotate them that much. Actually, we can rotate them all the way, but you get a bit of paint rub, so you might not want to do that. So be careful. But I don't know why you would want to do that anyway. Let's check out the knees. We have double joints on this uh, figure, which is pretty interesting considering how bulky it is. But you can see there are two joints, one there, one there. So two joints per knee, and we can bend his legs at the el at the elbows at the knees a little more than 90 degrees just a little more rather nice and we have a lot of uh, articulation with the feet at the ankles we have pivot we can rotate the feet a full 360 degrees but once again watch out for paint rub see there's a bit of resistance there so be careful uh, and we have toe pivot very nice to have on a figure that's this bulky. So overall, I'd say the articulation on this figure is quite, quite good. Uh, definitely much more impressive than than what you would expect, considering how bulky the figure is. So SH Figure Arts did a fantastic job in uh, in regard to the articulation of this figure. All right, let me just get him to stand up right. So once I get this done, all right, I guess that's that's okay. Come on, man. Come on, Bruce, stand up properly. You look kind of sloppy. Exercise, or should I say exhibit some good posture. There we go, that's, that's decent, I guess. Uh, the figure comes with these accessories. You get a spare head. Let me uh, adjust the focus on my lens. You get a spare head. It's pretty much the same head that's on the figure right now. However, um, it depicts the figure, or should I say, it depicts the character as if he's looking to his uh, his left. So take from that what you will. A lot of people are pretty disappointed in these uh, these additional head sculpts that have been coming with the most recent SH Figure Arts figures. A lot of people consider them to be lazy additions to the figures, but Hey, uh, they're better than nothing, right? And it comes with these alternative hands that depict, you know, the character with his hands open as opposed to closed in fists. So take on that what you will. And that's pretty much all you get with this guy. So as I said a bit earlier, this iteration of the Hulk is a bit shorter than his previous Savage Self, whereas his previous Savage Self was slash is eight and a half feet tall. This iteration is only seven and a half feet tall. And it's actually perfectly to scale. Remember, this is a 112 scale figure. In 112 scale, one inch is equal to one foot. So uh, if you take a look at where this lines up here, sorry, I'm obstructing your view. Crap, I gotta move in a bit closer so you can get a better look at that. There we go. If you take a look at that, you see it hits the seven and a half inch mark pretty much dead on. So he's he's perfectly in scale. He's seven and a half inches tall, as he should be. So um, I would say SH Figure Arts did an amazing job in terms of scaling this figure. He's just as tall as he should be. He's exactly as tall as he should be in one twelve scale. Pretty amazing. So this is SH Figure Arts' figure of Hulk as depicted in Endgame. 
stacked, or should I say positioned back to back with SJ's figure arts' figure of the Hulk as depicted in Infinity War. As you can see, he is indeed shorter slash smaller as he should be. Uh, this figure of the Hulk comes in at about 8 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. It should be 8 and a half inches, but it's a little shorter than that. Um, not, not a big deal, but a, uh, you know, if you're someone who's you know, a stickler for scaling, maybe you might uh, have an issue with that. You know, the fact that this figure here isn't exactly eight and a half inches tall. Uh, let me measure it for you on screen. So, here's the ruler. Oops. There's the ruler. Let me get my uh, paper here. As you can see, he doesn't come up to eight and a half inches. He's about one, two, three, about eight and one fourth or eight and about eight and one fourth of an inch or eight and three sixteenths of an inch. Somewhere around there, as you can see. So he's not as tall as he should be, but I don't mind. I don't mind. Uh, but this one is exactly as tall as it should be, which is pretty damn amazing. So let's put him back here, and let's just compare the uh, figure of the Hulk as depicted in Endgame by SH Figure Arts to that by ZD Toys, which is a Chinese brand. This is seemingly a legitimate figure, by the way, in case anyone is wondering. Let me just uh, put this into focus. Into focus, too close. There we go. As you can see, um, the Marvel in insignia is on the bottom left foot of uh, this figure by ZD Toys with the, I believe that's the trademark or copyright uh, symbol. So this is seemingly a legitimate figure by ZD Toys. It's, it's not uh, a bootleg or anything like that. So uh, this is how they stack up to one another. Um, I have looked at some photographs of the Hulk as depicted in Endgame, and uh, the figure on the on the left by SH Figure Arts is definitely more screen accurate in terms of the design of the suit and uh, the color slash shade of purple used. So uh, just keep that in mind, and of course the articulation on the SH Figure Arts is much better. Uh, the only area in which I would say this figure is more accurate in terms of the costume is uh, here. It includes these uh, lines slash shapes in the abdominal section, which this one does not. Uh, that, or should I say these details, are present on the costume in the movie, but they're not present on the SH Figure Arts. But overall, the actual design of the costume in terms of uh, the colors and the patterns on it are much more screen accurate on the SH Figure Arts than on the ZD toy. So here's a look at how this figure stacks up to SH Figure Arts' figure of Thanos as depicted in Avengers Endgame. He is noticeably a bit shorter as he should be because Thanos is a little over 8 feet tall, whereas this version of the Hulk is, as stated earlier, 7.5 feet tall. However, um, I don't think the difference is as great as it should be in terms of scale, so let's take a look at how tall this figure of Thanos is. Let me reposition him to give you guys a better look. Let's see what we've got here in terms of height. Let me see if I can increase the focus. There we go. That's much better. What do we've got here in terms of height? So as you can see, this figure of Thanos is 7 and 9 sixteenths of an inch. He should be a little over 8 inches tall, so this figure of Thanos is shorter than it should be but still taller than this figure of the Hulk. Remember, this figure of the Hulk is seven and a half inches tall, which translates to seven and eight sixteenths of an inch. So he's this figure of Thanos that is one sixteenth of an inch taller uh, than the figure of the Hulk on the left. Uh, not as, as tall as it should be, that is, but still taller. Take from that what you will. So here's a look at the figure of Hulk as depicted in Avengers Endgame by SH Figure Arts standing alongside other figures of characters from Avengers Endgame by SH Figure Arts. 
I wanted to give you guys a look at all of these figures standing side by side so that you can see how they compare to one another in terms of size, uh, specifically you know, in regard to uh, the difference between the normal size characters uh, and uh, Hulk, of course, because uh, in the film, most of the male characters are about as tall as Smart Hulk's shoulders. So this presentation here should give you uh, some confirmation that in terms of the differences in sizes between Smart Hulk and the other figures, the scaling is quite accurate. So this has been a review of S.H. Figure Arts' figure of Smart Hulk as presented in Avengers Endgame. I hope you guys have enjoyed the review. Be sure to leave some comments below to thumb this video up and to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.